1933 film by Fritz Lang, The Testament of Dr. Mabuse, was his second sound film. The first was M, the movie about a child murderer with Peter Lorre. Both of them used sound in quite interesting ways. In the first film, in M, the mother of the child who's about to disappear in M calls the child's name uh, down a stairwell, and you see the shot of the stairwell, which is very much a movie convention in a way, empty stairwell, but you hear this echoing name of the little girl, Elsie. In a way, it, it's just the name being called by the mother. And this point, she doesn't know that she's not coming home. And the other thing is that in that movie, the, the killer, Peter Laurie, signals that he's about to murder a child by whistling. He whistles a tune from Grieg's Pier Gint. The point about this in the storyline, it's a quite a complicated storyline where the cops are at a loss and the criminals decide to find the killer because he's interrupting their business. The cops are everywhere. and it's, Crime is supposed to be business, not sort of self-indulgent cruelty like killing children. It's supposed to be making money. And the criminals get together. They find him because, because a blind man identifies the whistle. So it's a purely sound sort of response to it. You couldn't do that. You couldn't make a silent movie about that. <laughs> but the it's um, but this is quite subtle and quite discreet and you know rather elegantly done in the, the testament of Dr. Mabuza, the sound question is it's really violent. I mean the movie opens in this in this uh, little room where, where the man who's trying to catch the criminals, the ex policeman, is hiding behind a box and everything is shaken by this racket from next door. It, it sounds like a monster of some kind stamping, but it's actually a printing machine. But the thumping is huge. Fantastic racket. So you feel this is a film not just about sound, but sort of dominated by sound. And some of the sound has taken over this movie and we'll, you can't get away from it. And then all the way through the movie, you're constantly reminded of uh, sound, that, that you are in a cinema where sound is now available and they're going to make use of it. The scene there is a man is on his way to the police station with the, informa the information he's just discovered that there is a link between the, the mad scribblings of this person in the, me in the mental hospital and a crime that's actually been committed. And then we, we hear a phone call, more technology. We don't, hear, we don't know who's making the phone call, but we hear a phone call to the criminals saying, here's a license plate, deal with this, deal with this question. And at that point, we see the cars on the street and the, the cars all pull up. They pull up at the traffic light uh, and there's a, the shot is sort of high angle looking at the front of the cars as the cars come towards us. And there's about six or seven cars in, in line at the traffic light. The traffic lights are very long. A lot of people, pedestrians are crossing. All of the drivers at the traffic light get crazy because they think the traffic light's broken, they start hooting. So for a moment, back, we're back to the noise thing. There's nothing but hooting going on here. You can almost forget the visual stuff with the hooting. Goes on, hooting you know, noise. Everybody, there, including the man who's about to get killed, is banging on the horn like everybody, like everybody else. And all, they're all different horns, so it's like a musical. It's like a symphony of different kind of car horns. And then somebody's shot, but we don't hear the shot. We hear everything except the shot. We hear the hooting and fantastic racket. And then when someone shoots somebody, it's silent. Uh, and then the noise starts again, not the horns, but the car noise, and all the cars move forward, uh, except one. And so the cars just move the whole street. And this, now, now we see them from the back, not, and not from the front. The cars move away from us, uh, and, every, and the street is clear except one car is just stuck there. So it's a kind of montage. It's like a story, like a fable in its own right about movement, sound, and then the the stuff uh, throughout the film about the gramophone is very uh, is, is very striking because there really is no hint that it's a gramophone. But when you first hear the Dr. Baum, who's got, become the Mabuza figure, who's going to do all the terrible things, uh, you see the servant knocking on the door of his of his office, and then and the servant tries the door, and then the voice says, "I, I do not wish to be disturbed." Ich möchte jetzt nicht gestört werden. It's clearly the doctor's voice. And the servant says, okay. This occurs several times in the movie. When people want to see him, uh, they try the door. And, ich möchte jetzt nicht gestört werden. and it's clear, that we learn later, that just trying the door triggers the gramophone record. Right, so the, it, it, if anybody tries the door, a voice says, I do not wish to be disturbed, which serves as a kind of proof that he's there. It's an oral proof that he's there. But he's not there. It allows him to be somewhere else. Um, the other one is he meets uh, his, all the gangs, his criminals, in little groups in a room with a curtain, and the voice just comes behind the curtain. And there's no suggestion there's any gramophone or anything there. The suggestion is he just doesn't want to be seen. You know, he's a, he's a doctor, he wished to keep his an anonymity. None of the criminals think there's anything other than a man behind a curtain. He's referred to as the man behind the curtain. 
uh, throughout. And I wonder whether The Wizard of Oz is not some kind of riff on this story about what is there really behind the curtain. And then finally, when they, they, they break through the curtain, there's nothing there except a very old-fashioned gramophone with a, with a handle and put the thing, and the record goes round. There's a kind of interest in the medium itself, but also in technologies. But there is a real link between technology and, and magic. So between the crazy magic of hypnosis and things happening by remote control, which are not really happening, and actual technological new devices, sound films, gramophones and things, there's some sort of, the film suggests some weird collusion between sort of old fashioned magic and technologies, they're all about power or they allow you to do things you couldn't do otherwise, I guess is what they do.